as you guys know, I do own an iPod Nano. I made a review video of this, oh, probably about a year and a half ago when I bought it, maybe? Almost two years ago? Well, it was vandalized by a presidential hopeful. And as such, I decided I shouldn't really use it anymore because I use it at the gym. I also use it on my scooter and in my car. So I probably should see if maybe the vandalism might increase its value at some point and I can probably sell it for almost what I paid for it. Um, so I had to come up with another iPod until that time comes. So I went ahead and I looked at what my needs were in portable music um, -ness. So I went ahead and I picked up this. This is an iPod Shuffle, for those of you who have been living under a rock for the past five years, and uh, is the smallest iPod physically and capacity-wise that I've ever owned. Prior to owning this Nano, I had an older Nano, which was the wider model, um, and uh, that was the 4 gig version. This is the 16 gig model. Anyway, this is a 2 gig iPod Shuffle and all its Appleness. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. I actually um, <clears throat> I saw this at a friend's house, uh, basically the same model, and I actually like the way it looks. I like the size, but I especially like the simplicity of its design and the um, and the built-in belt clip. It's definitely, uh, in my opinion, one of its biggest selling points. When you're working out and running on a treadmill, having a small clip-on iPod is definitely an asset because, I mean, let's face it, I mean, you really don't want to be fumbling with menus. You just want to be able to press, go, press play and go. And if you want a different song, hit forward. Um, and every time I jog with this iPod, even though I have the shake function disabled, it still shuffles to another song. So as I'm running, it's changing tracks constantly. Um, and not only that, but I have to keep fumbling through menus, and I, I just don't like that. And I, yeah, I know I could make playlists and stuff, but um, let's just get down to bare essentials. I just need an iPod that I can store a few playlists on and nothing else and that's where the iPod Shuffle comes in. The packaging is typical Apple, minimalist. You know, it's almost a work of art by itself. So let's go ahead and open her up. Now the one that I saw at a friend's house is basically the same version, of, the same model as this. Um, but I think, I think it's the exact same one, two gigs. But it had a really cool feature that I liked. It had a it actually has a little tiny docking station. Oh, this isn't this is this cute. Um, so here's the tiny little iPod and the little tiny pull strap to remove it from the packaging. Let's see. Oh, isn't that cute? Look at this thing. Isn't that adorable? It's even got an Apple logo on the back. Laser etched. Oh, that's acid etched. I bet. Tiny little spring clip. Mm. Anyway. Little hold button. Oh, it's already charged. Who would have thunk it? So anyway, I really like the uh, design of this iPod. I mean, it's 50 bucks. I mean, for $50... It's actually it's actually priced just below the Sony Walkman cassette player that they sell. Anyway, oh look, they decided to save a few bucks. They did not include the little handy docking station. Those cheap bastards. But anyway, the first thing you'll notice is that this iPod does not have the iPod. Um, connector, or the um, the iPOS connector as I call it, because every 
eye thingy has one, except the iPod shuffle. But it does have a fairly unusual audio jack. It has this um, one, two, three, four conductor audio jack, which serves as a USB interface and charging port. It also has these useless iPod headphones that are good for nothing because they don't fit. Um, they don't fit my ears. I don't know about yours, but they don't fit mine. So screw those. Um, I actually bought a set of bullet style headphones that I use on my iPod and they work great. So let's go ahead and uh, synchronize this little thing. Tiny little itsy bitsy little uh, chunk of aluminum they call an iPod. Come on. Come on. Plug in. There you go. Use two hands. This is a two hand job. There we go. Look at that. Talk about precision and engineering. The connector is flush with the body of the iPod all around. Look at that. Is that cool or what? Yeah. All right. Let's plug in the iPod. All right. So here we go. We've um, basically set it up here. Manually manage music. Open iTunes and iPods connected. I do not want voiceover enabled. And I don't want to limit the maximum volume. Now these options are typically available on the main menu of most iPods in the settings menu. But because the iPod shuffle is, well, let's face it, doesn't have a menu, um, you can use iTunes to set most of the settings. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start dragging music to it. I have a lot of stuff here. So I'm going to make up some track lists. I don't need to videotape that. And I'm going to go ahead and just make a nice Chick Corea track list. That's nice. I'll put that in there. Get some Donald Fagan, Frank Zappa, Grateful Dead. In case you guys are wondering what kind of music I listen to, here's a quick... Now, I have to mention one thing. Every track on this computer was purchased legally. All 2,190 songs were purchased legally. I do not support piracy in that sense. Sorry, guys. When you have such a limited amount of storage space, you really learn a lot about what music you truly care about. Which is one of the reasons I like the iPod Shuffle. Because it actually allows me to narrow down my music to a specific number of tracks or artists. This is what made the final cut. These are the songs that I like the best and the artists that I have the most respect for. Some more than others. Oh, you know what? I forgot to add my Donald Fagan um, Morph the Cat album. I'm going to put the whole album on. It's pretty damn good. I'm a huge Steely Dan fan. I've been to two concerts. I own two t-shirts from those two concerts. I also own all of their albums on CD and uh, all of their newer ones that have been released, including um, Two Against Nature and Morph the Cat. Actually, no, wait. Morph the Cat was a Fagan solo album. I own... Um, Oh, yes, Everything Must Go. It's a great album. But here's what made the cut. Just to give you an idea as to what I truly enjoy. Um, I'm a huge Frank Zappa fan. Well, not as much as I could be. But there you go. <clears throat> so it is now synchronizing. And I will almost fill up the entire thing. Pretty cool.